of the trends I think that we're probably going to be continuing to see is um, uh, as time changes, I think people change their behaviors, the way they, the cultures evolve. And some of the facilities that we're going to have to design are going to have to adapt on how people operate. Um, everything, there's a lot of factors that are going to affect our architecture in the future. Everything from climate change to um, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, to uh, the cultures as they evolve, like the millennials, what their needs are, how families interact, how companies operate, uh, if they are operating remotely. Or, or they need uh, a facility to be able to do their work. There's so many things to, to consider. And I think, uh, you know, we will always be learning from history, uh, from our past uh, architecture and uh, what, was, what worked and what did not work. And I think that with knowledge are uh, being readily available through the internet and uh, through... Um, um, the media, I think uh, our ideas are evolving much, much quicker. So I think that the future really uh, will depend on, on some of that knowledge that we may gain. And that is why it's important to be able to stay in tune with the historical knowledge in the design of our past facilities. Of course, we have technologies now that are going to be uh, very, very important in how we design facilities, everything from solar energy to natural daylighting to uh, um, uh, recycled materials. I mean, a lot, a lot of this we're already doing today, uh, but it's going to continue to evolve at a much quicker space. Um, with the advent of drones, I think that we are going to be able to see flying cars much sooner. You know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, when we used to say, well, we're, we're going to have flying cars by the year 2000. Well, it didn't quite happen. Here we are, 2018. And, um, but I think it's more realistic now with the advent of drones and people could possibly have their flying cars here in the not too distant future. So these facilities that we design, I think are need to consider uh, a, a place for their air transport. Um, also, how shopping occurs. Um, you know, I know that Amazon is using drones to be able to ship packages. Uh, that is something that needs to be uh, considered as well. How is it that uh, people are learning? Will they have to go to school? Will they have to work from home? If indeed they're spending more time from home studying, well, then that the you know those homes will have to be designed in a way so that it is provides uh, a um, classroom environment, but from their facilities at home, right? So it, those are those are uh, things that need to be considered. What does it look like? You know, I wish I could have a uh, a uh, magic ball to show you uh, how this looks like. But uh, I think that for now, we need to be able to concentrate on the needs more so on what it's going to look like. Some of the basic challenges are always going to be there in the design of, of future, uh, futuristic uh, architecture. I think people will always have their own ideas. I think we will always have uh, legal challenges. We will always have to deal with codes, building codes that are applicable. We're always going to have to be dealing with safety. We're always going to have to be dealing with the lack of resources. And I'm not talking money. I'm talking like water, for example. How to get rid of waste. How to uh, bring in energy into, these, into our facilities. Uh, we're all, always going to have uh, the challenge of space the room required for people to operate uh, uh, well in a, in a facility. So, you know, there's always the same uh, challenge will always be there. And we're always going to have to be thinking uh, outside the box in order to be able to come up with solutions. You know, there's, they say that there's no such thing as a problem, just opportunities. 
And that's how us architects like to see things uh, through these uh, more problems, more opportunities. The experience that we have gained over the last 30 years working for organizations such as NASA, JPL, Aviation, Aerospace, uh, really has groomed us to be able to think of the challenges coming down the future. Um, and, you know, some of the challenges uh, are not only on what a building is going to look like or what kind of infrastructure you need to bring in or how is the facility going to operate. Some of the challenges really have to do from a legal perspective. They also have to do with opinions. They have to do with the media. They have to do with uh, challenges from building officials. Um, all of that is outside of the realm of strictly design. There is need for public relations to be able to have negotiation skills, to be able to have communication skills so that all the parties involved may be able to understand uh, how your facility is going to operate. We're going to have financial challenges, you know, financial from the perspective of taxes to fundraising to uh, grants to uh, donations, um, capital improvements. You know, finances are going to be very, very critical. Uh, so there's a lot of challenges that are occurring that are outside of the realm of design. As architects, we need to have those skills to be able to deal uh, with good communication, uh, good ideas, um, good skills and tools to be able to communicate those ideas from a design perspective and also from, uh, from a legal perspective. You know, the, the spectrum is really, really broad. That's why today our architects need to be very, very well prepared in all those areas, not just as good designers, but well-rounded businessmen as well.